I'd like to walk you through the setup on our digital wrench software. So if you go into the top menu and you go to setup, you go to company setup, it'll bring up this form. Uh, you put in your company name, your address, your company email, website if you have it. If you're in Canada, you're going to want to click on the setup for use in Canada and it'll change it to postal codes. Down here you can have an update date for the work order when it's done so you can check that turn that on the default invoices for the program are right here in the center so you can have an invoice for the work order itself when you complete it uh, I would suggest you start with 15 you can have an invoice for just the estimates which can be different so you can try different invoices in the program and decide what you like best and down here in this box you've got the ability to turn vehicle fields on, off, or completely off. So you can kind of experiment with this. It allows you to pick the options you want to appear on the screen. You can turn the insurance options off or on. Uh, the engine options like four-wheel drive on the vehicle options, four-wheel drive, automatic. You can turn those on, turn those off. If you're not working with an automobile, you can turn them all off and it'll come up with a completely different entry form for your for your item that you're working with. Down here, you can put in a logo. You can do a BMP or a JPEG that'll print on your invoices if you pick the right ones. Here's your taxes set up. You can uh, taxes for parts, labor, or your other charges, special charges. Over here, you can have your tax rates Notice this is 10%, so this would be 6.5%. Uh, this is the ability to charge a percentage for disposal of old parts using the total. So this is a supply charge. Uh, you can have it on parts, you can have it on labor, you can have it on both. You can choose to tax it or not tax it. The default commission rates down here, if you're going to use them for the technician, uh, I have this one set at 30%. Default labor rate, universal markup for parts. Uh, this is set at 50%. 50% would mean $1 would sell for two. Okay, so if you're doing a different kind of labor rate for wholesale, you can put down a wholesale labor rate and a default markup for wholesale. On the next tab, you'll see the work order memos that print on the work orders. Uh, this one up here would be your top memo. It prints on the, on the bottom left side of the invoice. This one prints just a little further down, and this is this can be customized to anything you want in your state. We we'll go to the user defined options. User defined options can be used to print out a to do list for the technician. You can put anything you want in here, and then you can check off what you want them to do. Uh, the entry fields, entry one through five, they will need to be able to put in an actual value for that. So an example would be idle RPM, top speed, RPM, etc. Over here you can put in dates and that would allow you to input the dates. Your external setups would be the name of the supply charge if you want it to say EPA supply charges or something else you can put whatever you want in there and that'll print out on your invoice. This is the folder to save invoice PDFs so if you turn on the ability to print a PDF for your invoice, then you can tell it where you want it to be saved. Down here, if you're interfacing with the real-time labor guide, you can put in the path where the real-time labor guide is, and it'll automatically pick those estimates up and bring them right straight into the program when you click on that button. So those are your different options for setup. 